Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I'm here with just a quick unboxing of the production version of Two Minutes to Midnight. This one is by Plague Island Games, and I actually did cover this a little while back. I had a prototype copy of this sent to me, and what was great, and what I really just can't say enough about it, is a lot of times I'll cover production copies and stuff like that, and you know that like the, the designer publisher they they appreciate the work that you put into it when a production version of the game shows up you never had to ask for it you never said anything you know i i didn't ask him you know to send it to me i'm not complaining because i like the game so i was definitely thrilled this one showed up a few weeks back and i have just now gotten a chance to pull it out unwrap it and give her a quick peek and i really did like this this is similar to twilight struggle by GMT Games, but it has solitaire components, a uh, lot, lot more complex, I believe, uh, type of gameplay, bigger in scope, a lot going on, a lot of moving parts with this one, but really that solitaire gameplay, I was like, oh, mwah, magnifique. I love the fact that someone was trying to make, you know, something along this lines for those of us who don't get the chance to play with opponents as much as we would like, because there's no way I'm gonna get Gippy's gal to play this with me. It's just not gonna happen. But yeah, I, I really do appreciate, you know, when a designer or publisher will take and just send the copy to their reviewers because they understand the reviewers take the time to help promote it. They don't ask for anything, but doesn't mean that I'm not appreciative when they when they do send that my way. So just so you guys do know, this was sent to me, but I had already reviewed it and talked about it before I got the preview copy. So the overview of the game, the prototype version of the game is up. I've had that up for like a year now. So definitely take a look at that if you want to. And I am considering doing a little playthrough of this once I finish a few other things that are on the table already, because this was a fun one. I enjoyed this one. But anyway, let's take it down to the table, take a quick peek at it, let you guys see all the beautiful components that are in this box. All right, so we're down here at the box, got it shrink ripped off, and let's take a look and see what the production version is. And I am expecting good things since the prototype copy of this that I did play uh, was really good. I did feel bad about it though, because he <laughs> emailed me, because sometimes when you have prototype copies, you mail them around between different YouTubers and reviewers because there's only so many. A prototype copy is very expensive to make versus a production copy. And I'd missed his email for something like a couple of weeks and he finally contacted me back and I was like, I'm so sorry, bud. I, I just completely missed your email. So I do apologize again about that. Let's take a look at what all we got in here. And actually, show again the back of the box real quick. Nice looking components there. And of course, we're gonna automatically compare this to Twilight Struggle because they are similar. And this is a heavy box. And I'll tell you what, one of the things I like seeing is that, that little solo mo mode that is on there. Because that is something the original Twilight Struggle did not have a solo mode. I don't know, maybe it had one that was, you know, um, user generated, something like that, but no official one that I know of. Nice thick rule book here and this one is it's chromey it is complex there is a lot of moving parts uh with this game and it's been a little while since i played it i have to read all over this again and i think yeah talks about the scenario i think there was a nice example of play in the back and i'm looking to see if it still has that this is talking about the scenarios maybe there's another one in there designer notes yeah Still scenarios back here, Brave New World. Cool stuff though, really fun game. Let's check this out. Looks like we've got our player aids. I love it when the stuff is all nicely packaged up. That way it's easy to pull it all out, keep it all organized. All right, and our learn to play introductory scenario. Let you know you're only using these little parts right here. We're all starting on it, and then our setup for our other player aid because there was a lot going on when it came to like research and technology uh, in this game as well. That is something I did like as well. Tells you what you got going on with the card deck. Cool. And it looks like we've got one of these for each one of our scenarios. So scenario one, so we get steamroller. Two is a new era. See that says 1956 plus. 
The Eagle and the Bear, 1966, and how all that's gonna start off. And again, on the back side, it's gonna give you overview, the card decks, if anything's getting removed, you know, special notes, all that cool stuff for each one of these scenarios. Scenario four, starting out a little later, 1976. And we got one just on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, that's cool, 1961 to 1965. All the cool stuff that's starting up with that. And I believe it's just six in this. Yeah, Brave New World, 1986 plus. So this is kind of like future play. Well, not future play, but uh, should I say third world war type deal, like prep up to it. <coughs> so all told, we got seven of these scenarios, an introductory one and six others that you can play through. And I believe all these should just be doubles of the same types of player aids. Am I correct? Should be, yep, a couple of those and a couple of those. And it seems like just one of these. Yep. Okay, so this one is for the solo bot. Okay, so playing a solitaire. So, of course, we only need one of those. How to use the solitaire components. There's a lot listed down on that. And then we've got a couple of our sequences of play how you're gonna do all your different types of actions. And there was a lot of cool stuff like uh, spy action, stealing technology, nuclear weapons, developing, you know, submarine technology and all that cool stuff. And I believe this is kind of a continuation on of the different types of actions. Cause there's, there's a lot of different actions you can do in this game. And it's kind of like if this, then that, and different roles can happen depending on uh, what type of actions that you have. And I always like it when they have player aids that make that information easy to find versus just having it in the rule book. Yeah, stuff like this, like roll 2d6 and apply the, the highest die. This is for like aggressions. Naval advantage, blitzkrieg, success, political success, fail, uh, failure, and then end of turn sequence, how all that's gonna be uh, played out. And we've got a couple of each one of these with the exception of the solitaire one. And, oh wow, this is nice. This is nice. I expected this to be made out of the same player aid material as this. Okay, so this is just your regular like cardstock glossy uh, player aid, but this is the piece that goes on the mat board so you can turn it around like such if you're playing across the table from your opponent and it gives one person, you know, the their stuff facing them makes it much easier. It's just a huge quality of life improvement. And this is made out of the same stuff the, uh, the actual map is made out of. That is, that's just an extra step. Right, that's just extra quality of life improvement right there for the player. Really gotta say, that's a good call on their part. Let's see, pull out our map here. Oh no, this is player aid. Look at this, this is nice too. Again, made out of the same stuff the map is. Nice mounted board. Oh, look at that. That's just beautiful. This came out great. Love that. We got our strategic weapons here, bunkers, computer stuff stealing uh, tech, the technological research, all the stuff that happens. And there are some like the US gets, or should we say NATO, kind of has a little advantage on satellites. I think uh, USSR had a little advantage on since they launched Sputnik first. And then kind of a turn record track of what's going on over here. And then the strategic outlook, this had to do with a balance. Certain things are gonna oscillate back and forth depending on what actions uh, are taken throughout the game. And then it has intelligence down here at the bottom. So you got nuclear, conventional, so nuclear arms, conventional arms, naval, and then your intelligence down here at the bottom. Oh, this is nice. I gotta say, the quality of components on this are top quality. I hope this continues. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, nice, thick. They did not skip out. They went top quality all across the board for all the components. Because you guys got to remember, the last time I played with this, it was a prototype copy. So it was those laser cut wooden counters that had that barbecue smell to them, which I, I really love that smell because it makes me think of, uh, you know, prototype new stuff, you know, secret technology. Uh, but these are great. These are very nice, uh, good quality counters. And we've got another one. 
It has to do with all our different uh, weapons for the USSR here, submarines, bombers, ICBMs, nuclear weapons, uh, technology uh, stealing. We've got army counters down here, even a little stealth tech, bunkers, MIRVs over here. And then show you guys that's what the back of those all look like and our investment and then some more admin type counters here at the top. And then I believe this is our last counter sheet. This one has a lot of the US NATO type forces, money owed, few more Soviet type counters up here. Again, investment counters that come into play during the game. The spy counters for NATO, bombers, ICBMs, subs, MIRVs, bunkers, little star admin counters. And then these look like nation counters over here with the exception of Cuba. Well, I guess, I mean, Cuba is their own little nation. So yeah, uh, Canada, Mexico, Japan. And then we got some blank just extras here. And those, that's the back of all of those. So this should be our main map. Oh, this thing is big. This is nice. This is nice. Oh, look, we got all a bunch of bags. Okay, I'll look at that here in just a sec. Hold on, I gotta fold this thing out because look how thick this is. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna be able to get it all in frame right now because I'm not set up for that. I'm just set up for uh, uh, doing a quick unboxing, but this is the map and it is a nice one. Very nice materials. Uh, looks really good on the board, I gotta say. Really good on the board. Let's see if I can pull this down and show you guys this. This is kind of like NATO, US, their record. This is all their informational stuff they're gonna keep track of. And like I was saying, the Soviets have theirs on the right side. Sorry, let's pull you under on the right side of the board. But that's where this comes into play because if you're playing across from your opponent, you can set it up on the map just like so. That way it's easy for the opponent to keep track of whatever they're they're using that way they're not trying to read all their stuff upside down that again just nice quality of life improvement there and for that to be made out of matte material you know mounted board instead of just the regular play raid because that's that's what i had just you know card stock uh when i had the prototype copy but this this is excellent that's going above and beyond and i know in the grand scheme of things it's not that big of a deal but it's just those small little little improvements that they're taking to make it the best that they possibly can. And I gotta say, I appreciate that. Uh, these are gonna be our cards and all our admin counters. We've got the little acrylic tokens, our blue ones, red ones for the USSR, some stars for US forces, our red cubes, which I believe were aggression cubes think the gray ones had to do with the uh, the independent nations. I'll have to take a look at that. Oh, look at these. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. I like those uh, fists there. Those were just on little minor counters when I played that. That is very nice. Oh, and they got the this color of them as well. Very good. I like that. All of these are done very now nicely. And you guys can see they've got the uh, the tray to keep all of this so it can actually all go back in the box and fit nicely after you open it all up. The only thing is you're going to have to put the counters in something. They did give you the baggies for it if you want to go that way, which is what I usually do because it works well. But I think there's enough room in here once you put the mounted maps all back in there that you should be able to fit a counter tray in there on the top, but only one but there's not that many counters, so you should be able to do it all right. Here are our dice. They're used for the game, four red, four blue. And then the engine of the game is obviously the different card decks. And there's a whole bunch that are gonna be in there. The solitaire deck is in here as well, if you wanna use that. But some of these are gonna be used for some scenarios, some not, it's just gonna depend. This one, this game, I mentioned this before because I did a uh, an overview of it, but there was just so much to this game. And I know I've forgotten a, a good chunk of it because it's been over a year since I've been able to really get my hands on it. 
But now that I'm going through all the pieces again, I really do want to get it down to the table and play it again. Actually uh, really get in there. The game is for someone who wants Twilight Struggle, but they want a deeper version of it and the ability to play it solitaire, like the, a real ability to play that game solitaire. So if you've ever looked at Twilight Struggle before, but you're like me and you play most of your war games solitaire and you haven't really got a chance to play that one, <laughs> This one is one you definitely want to look at. The only thing about it is that it is relatively complex. I will tell you that right off the bat, it's going to take uh, a little bit of time. There is a learning curve to this one. I do believe it is a fair chunk uh, more chromey than, uh, than Twilight Struggle. But with all the, the interlocking parts and the ability to play it solitaire, uh, it's definitely a fun one. And the components, I mean, good grief, they're just top notch. I, I can't compliment them enough. This is, again, one uh, a newer developer. And just the little steps here, right? Look at the tray, got all the pieces down in there, and you can see how the map locks in there perfectly, goes in there perfectly. That is just a beautiful quality of life thing that they've done. Take this little piece, set it right there, we're good. Actually, before I put that piece in, I should put this one in and then put that in there like that now what you got left is your three counter sheets and then the player aids and the rule book so if let's pull that out put in our rule book and our player aids here and see how much room we got left yeah that brings us pretty well close to the top you can fit a counter tray in here but it's it's going to be snug it's going to be pushed up a little bit. I do that perfectly fine with my game boxes, but just understand you're gonna have that, so you wanna be careful with it. I think this is gonna work fine though with little baggies, you know, spread across the top. And let's just take a little example here, see if this will fit. This is DVG, uh, DVG tray. So if you've got a tray in there, your box is gonna stick up about that much. That's not too bad, really, all things considered. So I think that will work fine. So yeah, definitely as far as packing goes, getting everything back in the box uh, easily after you've undone it all, uh, this one's not bad. It's gonna work fine with a tray or baggies. I'm actually probably gonna go with a tray myself because I think that'll work a little bit better. So yeah, if you guys wanna see this one play, definitely let me know. I will pull it back out because this is not one that I will be disappointed to get back to the table, especially a beautiful production version like this. It will be a little bit before I get to it because I've got Kharkov, I've got to start first, I've got to finish a most fearful sacrifice. And when I finally clear out the room, I've got to get some more uh, sacred oil done as well. So I've got a few ahead of it, but if you would like to see this done, you know, so many weeks in the future when I get my chance to get my hands back on it, uh, comment about down below, let me know. All right, that's gonna be it for this one. You guys take care, I'll see you in the next one.